Hello, 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 hello. Solutions to our cube problem. I call it the cube problem. Here is a cube, 12 sides, and each side has a resistor, capital I. We apply a potential difference between A and B. So a current is flowing in here, and the same current is flowing out here, and that potential difference is 10 volts. This current, right here, will split equally in all three directions. Because of the symmetry of the problem, there is not one direction that is preferred over any other. If you want to give that a little bit more thought, that's fine with me. I now take this for granted, because it's so obvious, that this current I, little i, is one third of capital I, this is also little i, this is also little i. And as they arrive here, this must be also little i, little i, a little i, and they together are then back to capital I. Now I make a statement which is not so obvious, but I'm going to prove that. The proof will come later, and it is easier now to accept it, just for now, because then the answers to the questions follow immediately. So I make the claim that there are six sides through which the current is small i, which is one third capital I, and through all other six sides the current is the same and is one half i. I will prove that shortly. So what this means that when current i arrives here, that one half i goes in this direction and one half i goes in this direction. When current i arrives here, that one half i goes in this direction and one half little i goes in that direction. That's what it means. I will prove that. If you accept that, the problem is solved. Because now go from A via C to B. We know that's 10 volts, the potential difference. So if you go from A, D, C, B, you first have here a current small i, then you would have your one half i, and then you have your small i. So you have a total of two and a half i. If you go this way, you have i, you have one half i, and you have one i, so you have two and a half i. If you go this way, this way, this way, you have i, one half i, plus another i, so you have two and a half i. So the potential difference, you go from A to B, is 10 volts is 2.5 little i times capital I. Now go from A to C. This is i, this is one half i. You can also go this way. This is i, this is one half i. So now you have that Va minus Vc is 1.5 ir. And that is 3 fifths times 10, so that is plus 6 volts. So A is 10 volts higher than B, but it is 6 volts higher than C. What is now Vc minus Vd? Well, first of all, C has a lower potential than D, and therefore it will be negative. The current from here to here is one half i. There is no other current. In other words, minus one half i r is the potential difference. And that's therefore minus two volts. Because one and a half i r <laughs> is six volts. So, from here to here, a is four volts above d. D is 2 volts above C, and C is 4 volts above B, a total of 10. Any routing that you make now, you will be, when you go from A to B, no matter how you go, the potential difference is 10. I want to remind you that my small i is one third of capital I. So I can also write down, if I take 
this equation that I, so I'm going to write down in here, one, in this I I'm going to write down one third capital I. This little I becomes one third of capital I. So there is a three below here, two and a half divided by three is five six. So I times five six times capital R is ten. And this five over six R is a classic that you can look up online very easily. It is what we call the effective resistor. So if you take the cube away and you connect between A and B a resistor of 5, 6 R, then the current that will flow through that resistor is exactly the same current that will flow through this cube. It's called the effective resistor. But I didn't ask that to you, but you can easily check that on the web. Now I will prove to you that this is one half I. All other sides is one half I. So let us assume now that the current here, of course, is I, and the current here is I, and the current there is I. That is non-negotiable. But let's assume that when this current reaches this point, that it doesn't become half of I and half of I here, but it becomes A times I. Well, if it is A times I, then this must be 1 minus A times I, because I comes in, so I must flow out. I in this direction, if it splits here between AI and 1 minus A times I, because the sum of them, must be I, because I flows in. This is I, this is I, this is I. Now, let us go from this point here to this point. So capital small i, and then 1 minus A times I. This way we go small i and a times i. But the potential difference this direction must be the same as the potential difference in this direction. This i is the same as that i. So that's fine. So the conclusion is that 1 minus a must be a i so that this potential difference is the same as this. So 1 minus a is a, so a is 1 half. End of story! <laughs> well, when I do the solutions, of course, that is several weeks before I, or even months maybe, before I post it, so I have no idea how well you people will be doing. The more classic problem that you also find in Halliday and Resnick is they give you the cube and they say every side has a resistance R and they ask you then for the effective resistor. So if you take the cube out and replace it by only one resistor. And that answer would then be 5 divided by 6 times R, times the resistance R. All right, have a nice day, take care, and I hope that you are not upset with this problem, and I hope that you will still want to be friends with me. <laughs>